Good morning, churches. On the circuit, I am Walter, otherwise known as Pastor Roger from Colesburg. And we have Pastor Phil from here, and we have Pastor Mike from Epworth, and we have Zach, who is Phil's son, and we have a baptism, so you'll get to know them later. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our production of this worship time together. Announcements for Colesburg. Keep on going with uh, getting in contact with other people to be present, to be Jesus for those who might be hurting or alone or shut in. Just reach out as any way you can. Start those prayer groups going. Start the Bible studies going as we enter this season of Advent in a oh, mysterious way still celebrating the birth of Christ or looking forward to that and at the same time looking forward with hope to the second coming. Maintain that hope the best that you can. Announcements then other than Colesburg. For Manchester, Second Helpings drive through every first and third Monday of the month, frozen meals, 4 to 5 p.m. Youth group is back on Wednesday nights, grades 5th through 12th, 6.30 to 7.30 in Wesley Hall. Letters have gone out. No live worship until Christmas Eve, 3.36 and 11. Small groups may still use their building as long as you wear a mask and practice social distancing. This year's Advent study, Not Yet Christmas by J.D. Waite, Walt, is now available. We encourage families to do this study together rather than have large, small groups. If you have a small group that you feel comfortable meeting with, that is fine. You can read one page per day, perhaps before a meal, and discuss your thoughts as we prepare the way for the coming of the birth of our Savior. Each week in worship, we will focus on one of the devotionals from the previous week. Epworth, you can pick up books in the church office, or if you are not going out, you can call Cat in the church office and we will hand deliver them to you. Books are six fifty a piece. Epworth Church, these books are still available for you as well during normal office hours. The study begins on Monday. And once again, welcome to our worship. Good morning, churches. I am the righteously right Reverend Phil Rogers, but most refer to me as Pastor Slim. Okay, well, I thought that would be funny. All right, let us open with our greeting prayer. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, our Father, we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Begin anew this Advent to shape us. Make us like Mary to sit at the feet of our Lord Jesus and discover the only necessary thing, your presence. Restore us, O oh God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Shape us these days of Advent into a season of undivided attention, of holy anticipation. Amen.
if ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020, as we know is the nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear up open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O, o come, come, O come, come Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Now we come to that joyful yet awkward time of passing the peace as best we can here distance in the sanctuary and as best we can at home uh, together. The peace of Christ be with you. Also Let us share the peace of Christ one with another. Peace, y'all. Scripture this morning, as God tells Isaiah, we see it through his eyes, God's eyes. Isaiah 64, 1 through 4. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Good morning. Um, today's scripture is going to be coming to us from Luke, I believe, and it's a good story about Jesus going to some ladies' houses, Martha and Mary. And this made me think a little bit about Thanksgiving time since we're, well, just about to celebrate it, but you guys have already celebrated it when you see this. And you can raise your hands at home because the NEA can't probably see you that well, but if you had people over to your house, go ahead and raise your hand for Thanksgiving because, you know, it is what it is, right? We're trying to somewhat live our normal lives to the best we can. And this made me think about growing up. And growing up in my mother's house, it was pretty much always clean. I mean, white glove clean all the time. Now, this doesn't matter, though, because when people are coming over, we get the cleaning tornado. And you have never seen such cleaning that happens when there's company coming over from my mother. I mean, there is literally stuff flying across the house, moving spots because this spot wasn't good enough, so now it's got to go to a new spot. And, I mean, you could eat off of every single surface in the house. I mean, this thing is, like, shining. If you put a light in there, it would glow. It is 
unbelievable. And this is the house that I grew up in. And this made me think of Martha because Jesus shows up and Martha's like, oh no, the house isn't clean enough. It's probably clean enough, but, you know, the house isn't clean enough. So she's running around cleaning, and she's cleaning up because it's Jesus, and Jesus needs a clean place to sit. And, oh, wait, Jesus probably needs to eat. So she gets the kitchen going. So it's like she's doing 500 million things going on. And Mary sits down next to Jesus and just listens. And Pastor Mike's going to get up here and tell us a little bit more about this. But when it comes down to it, Jesus says, Martha, you're doing the wrong thing here. Come be with me. So that's just the layman's perspective of what Pastor Mike's going to be bringing to us this morning. So if you bow your heads with me here. Dear Lord, uh, it's so easy to get caught up in the cleanliness of a house, because that's so much pride to us. It's so easy to think, oh, we got to serve a massive meal. When all you ask for, Lord, is just to come in and, and listen to you and hear what you have to say. Pastor Mike's going to come up here and, and deliver an awesome message with that in mind. We love you. We thank you. Amen. All right. Uh, Before we get into the sermon this uh, morning, uh, I want everybody to take a minute and go ahead and pray for Zach because once his mom hears about him giving away his secrets, he's probably not getting anything for Christmas anymore. Uh, So not the best time of year. (laughs) No, thank you for doing that uh, uh, and and your gift for... uh, working in a children's message. But like we've been talking about, um, this year has obviously been anything but normal for us, right? It's, it's been totally off kilter. We wear masks to almost anywhere and everywhere we go. We don't get to see our families and friends as much as we'd like to. And some of us uh, have family and friends we don't get to see at all because we have to keep them safe. Sometimes we're having to work from home And I don't know about you guys, but when I work from home, I have four kids at home. That means a lot less productive time. Uh, Because it's so hard when I have the choice between work or playing a game with my kids. I choose kids. But uh, it's harder to become, uh, uh, be that way and, and be productive. And there's no birthday parties for the kiddos. And there's no graduation parties. And this could potentially be our second year in a row with kids not being able to walk for their own graduations. I, like so many of us, am yearning for any sense of normalcy we can, and a lot of us are hoping for that a little bit the coming holiday. But something strange happened. My son's birthday is on Halloween, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we celebrated his birthday, and I saw a glimpse of normalcy. The day after Halloween, all the decorations went up for Christmas. <laughs> Every store was fully decked out in their Christmas stuff, and, and so radio stations were starting to play Christmas music. For me, it was a sense of normal going on that I hadn't experienced in what felt like an eternity. But if I really think about it, it's kind of ironic. Because I don't know if there's some of you that are like me, but normally the Christmas music and skipping Thanksgiving and and all this stuff bugs me. It annoys me that we skip and and just forget about everything else and that it's become so commercialized, Christmas has. I mean, think about it. You guys just experienced Thanksgiving. We're going to, like Zach said, in a couple days or, or tomorrow... What's not to love about it? There's football. There's family. There's food. Anything else you need in a day besides maybe a nap? It's a pretty awesome day. Then you walk out out around the stores on Black Friday, which is absolutely craziness. And you go to stores or you look on Amazon if you're like me and you're like, I don't want to deal with people. I'm just going to go buy it online. You go on Amazon and you find those best deals And everybody's 
uh, uh, is everything you see, all the commercials on TV, even during uh, uh, the football games now, is pushing and pushing consumerism and buying the best gift for the loved ones. And, and we, buy the, we see these Christmas cards when we go and buy Christmas cards, uh, and we see, we, we sometimes get annoyed. I normally get annoyed by when you see the ones that say Merry Xmas. They have literally tried to take the Christ out of Christmas. But over the coming weeks, as we go through this Advent study, I thought it was going to be one thing. And honestly, as I've already started to read it, it started to challenge me already. So I feel very blessed to not necessarily look at what others are doing. To not look at what else is going on. We're going to be talking about that in our series, that exact thing, over the next four or five weeks. We've been... uh, well, you guys, if you guys have your Bibles with you, uh, I encourage you to have your Bibles with you and, and, and mark up stuff. It's okay to write in your Bibles. It's okay to take notes, mark things up, and make them look worn. They're supposed to be used. Go ahead and look up in your Bibles, Luke chapter 10. We're going to be reading verses 38 through 42. And, and while you look that up, I'll just let you know where we were uh, before we come to this passage. We're picking up right after Jesus is actually tested by the legal experts. Or a legal expert, asking him, uh, uh, asking what he, they must do for eternal life, and who is your neighbor? And Jesus proceeds to tell him about the the story of of the priest uh, Lev, uh, Levite and the uh, Samaritan, um, and then that's where we're going to be picking up. I encourage you; that's an awesome story to read right before that. After the sermon, go ahead and flip back and read that story. It's awesome for this time of year, as we're being pushed for consumerism to look at the people that may be struggling. I encourage you to read that after. But would you read with me uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will, only, it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. After this message, after this, this uh, um, scripture, do any of you find yourself relating to Mary or Martha? To find yourself uh, uh, looking like maybe as Zach talked about, comparing Martha and his mom. Do any of you, can you look at that story and put people or yourself in that place? The Marthas out there that see a task that needs to be done, it needs to be done right away. You need to get on it and you need to get straight to work. You don't have time for the distractions. You can't look around. You have to get it done. The only thing you notice when you're accomplishing this checklist of things you need is the people that aren't helping. That's all you notice. So why aren't why am I not helping me? Why are you not doing what I'm doing and getting this list done? And let's be honest, for those of us that make the checklist and we see that, it bugs us and it annoys us when we look and say, man, you're not pulling your weight. Help. We feel annoyed. Why can't they just get that stuff done before doing the stuff that, that doesn't have to be done? They can... Before Mary gets done or sits at Jesus' feet, why can't she help me get the checklist done and move on to the next? I'm pretty sure every parent at some time has felt that. Why can't my kid just get that stuff done before they get distracted and go off and do this? Why can't they do what they're told rather than go over and play or do that or this? What about the people that can honestly look at it and say they're more like Mary. We don't tend to think of ourselves. I don't think a lot of us think of ourselves as, as that side of it, where we want to slow down and experience something that doesn't come around all that often. 
You want to be able to push off the work to make the memories and learn from an expert on life and eternity. The fast-paced Martha would be the one that is matching what our consumer-driven society teaches us. But what is it that we see Jesus saying? Martha, Martha. I told a couple of the pastors this the other day, my brain automatically goes to that episode of the Brady Bunch that goes, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Everybody remember that one? Those of you that are too young for that, I showed my age. (laughs) But that isn't what the Greek translation suggests. It's not that same tone that Jan takes with with Marsha. The first Martha is a boom, a, a get her attention. Martha! And the second one is a, hey, Martha, a loving tone. Which makes me think of maybe that time or the times in our lives when we know it's time to pay attention. Like when mom says your first and middle name. It's time to shut up and listen, right? (laughs) You better check in because you're about to get in trouble if you don't. You stop and you listen. Jesus tells Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things around you. Things that don't really matter when you look at the big picture. Block them out. Concentrate on these teachings and what I'm telling you. This is such a powerful message that we can take from this with us today. In the midst of the hustle and bustle of Christmas and the holiday season that we normally get, we now throw a pandemic on top of it where we're worried about the stuff we don't get to do. We're normally worried about everything being perfect and if we're going to get the right size clothes for our kid or, or if we're going to get uh, the, the right toy or the right color thing or the right whatever it may be. This year, we're kind of just learning, do we get to be together? That's just some of the stuff that we worry about in the normal year, though, is all the right things. And as pastors, we worry about a whole different set of things during this time of year, and we even get a little bit distracted. We, we worry about making sure people remember, and this is a cliche we'll read in the book, People remember the reason for the season. And if we're going to be able to reach the people that come to church, and I'm, if this is you, this is, uh, might be a little call, but the people that come to church once or twice a year, are we going to be able to have that one great Christmas sermon that keeps them coming back? Is this the year we can reach them? Is this the year that we can give them the love and hope that comes with Jesus We struggle and we strive and we agonize over that. All of us that have ever been on the other side don't realize that we think of that stuff and we worry about that during the week just like you guys worry about your stuff being perfect. We worry about this service being perfect. But I want to give you a proposal. Maybe this Advent season... With all the craziness going on, we strive to be a little bit less Martha. And a little bit more like Mary. To not worry about what others around us are doing or not doing. And to worry, uh, and and the fact that everything's being commercialized, like I said, that bugs me, or whatever. And we can just focus this Advent season. Focus on our relationship, our own personal relationship with God. Take time to be present with God and worry less about the presence we buy. To dive into the word as it, conti- as it contains the one thing we all need right now, which is hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Christ.
Christ whose glory fills the skies and Christ the everlasting light the sun of righteousness arise and triumph for the shades of night come thou The fullness of your love And loose this heart bound up by shame And I will never be the same So here I wait in hope of you All my soul's longing through and through they spring from on high beneath, and they star in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn until your love in me is born, and joyless the evening sun until Emmanuel has come so here I wait in hope of you all my soul's longing through and through day spring from on high beginning and day starting Now it is our pleasure and honor to celebrate with the family as we share in the baptism of Evelyn Donna Cundy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit all this is God's gift offered to us without price. It is my pleasure now to present Evelyn Donna Cundy for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If so, say, I will. Now, church, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? And include these persons now before you in your care. With, With God's, God's help, help, we will we proclaim, proclaim the good, good news and live and according, according to the, the example, example of Christ. Of Christ. We, we will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her 
that she may be a true disciple, disciple who walks in the way that leads, leads to, to life. life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only, only Son, our, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing exists but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it. To wash away their sin and to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. That dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All oh, praise, praise to you, you eternal, eternal Father, Father through, your through your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, who with who you and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. It's Evelyn Donna, right? Evelyn Donna, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody just reach in and touch as best you can. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have put on Christ, in Christ you have been baptized. Alleluia. Evelyn Donna Cundy. <laughs> Please be seated. Okay. Church, now is the time where we have the opportunity to give back uh, of our tithes and our offerings during this time of, of giving and, and uh, giving back and buying presents. Lord, we pray that uh, we can remember to keep your church in mind so that we can continue to pri uh, pr provide the needs of our communities uh, and so we can continue to uh, uh, do your work. So during this time, we uh, want to pray a blessing over that offering um, that you'll be sending, and I believe all the churches have it, so you can drop it off at their church or you can mail it in. Um, and uh, uh, let's go ahead and pray over those offerings now. Will you pray with me? 
Gracious God, thank you so much for everything that we have and reminding us during this holiday season just how grateful we can be for the amazing uh, things we do have in our life, Lord. To be in, born in this uh, amazing country, to be um, able to uh, provide for our families in the way that are possible, Lord, and to be able to give back to you. Lord, help us as a church, as churches, as a circuit to know where it is you need us and where it is to take these offerings as you pour your spirit upon them. We pray that, that, that you make them multiply, Lord, so that we can be the hands and feet in any way needed in our areas. Lord, we love you and we thank you for everything you do for us. And thank you for the opportunity to be able to give back to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, a special time in the service this morning. We're going to bless the Operation Christmas Child boxes. Manchester United Methodist Church is a regional drop-off location for the Operation Christmas Child through Samaritan's Purse Ministries. This week, we will be shipping 1,501 boxes for children living in poverty all over the planet who would otherwise go without. Please join us in the blessing of all these volunteers, these gifts, and those who receive them. Loving God, We pray for your blessing over all of the boxes prepared to your glory through Operation Christmas Child. May these boxes be more than just presents. May each child experience the love that went into their preparation. May each box reveal your presence in their daily lives and a desire for them to know wholeness and security. May each gift provide a sense of value of their eternal worth. We pray that each box opens the door for the proclamation of your word so that these children and their families may hear of the gospel and believe. We pray for children and families who are suffering in the desperate circumstances of poverty, sickness, or war that you will meet their physical needs. Lord, we ask a special blessing for all who have labored to make this opportunity possible for these children everywhere. Lord, may these boxes find their way to those who are in need. All to your glory. Amen. This service has truly been a full service. We have sung, we've heard God's word, we've heard God's word wonderfully uh, proclaimed. We have shared in our first viral baptism, which um, has brought me greater joy than I can share. And we've blessed the work of so many uh, that are to receive these boxes. It has truly been a week of thanksgiving. And though we are coming into a time when we are facing a new normal around this holiday, let us keep in mind all the wonderful blessings that God has given us as we share in our joys and concerns together as a church family. Uh, Colesburg Prayers is Eli, is it Beeser? Belser, okay. Uh, Carl Borat, Tammy Pencil, Jean Pencil, Colleen Lincoln, Jake Schilling, Angel Culper, Lewis Bush, and all shut-ins, all nursing home residents, and all those who are in assisted uh, and assisted living residents. Manchester, we have Tom Allen, Vicki Bachman Leahy, Mary Bissell, Stella Rose Chapman, Lorraine Chester, Jim DeKeyser, Terry Dolan, Wilbur and Evelyn Everts. Larry Gorenson, Jeff Larson, Chris Larson, Joyce Lieby, Don and Carolyn Melody, Danielle Nelson, uh, Wayne Nistel, Tammy Reth Pencil, Susan Rogers, Tanya Smith, 
Gene Taylor, Donna Tenoff, Brooklyn Weifel, Bill Welcher, Norma Vandeveet, Dennis Zaruba, Jen Zeber, and the family of Garneth Hook, whose service was this last week. I would also like to again say a special prayer of thanksgiving for all that have come together and short notice to help to put this service together uh, so that we could be viral. So thank you to Ruth and to Mike and Michael who works in the evenings. Um, Y'all, we couldn't do this without you. And thank you for your service. Y'all, let us pray, shall we? Holy and loving God, we thank you for this time you've given us to be here together. And Lord, as we experience this worship here and now, we thank you for your presence because it is tangible. We feel you moving, Lord. We feel your comfort. We feel your hope. We rest in your presence. Lord, we pray that this is also conveyed through the medium so that those who are watching this at home or in their car or wherever they are, Lord, let them also experience the joy we know in you being fully present with us, walking with us in this new normal, telling us that this is but but an interruption and that our lives will return to normal. Lord, I ask you to be with all those who are struggling with this COVID illness. <clears throat> there are many in this church, and I'm sure in all of our churches, who right now, Lord, they are testing positive, and I'm sure that they are anxious, and I know that they cannot feel well. Lord, be with them in holy healing right now. And Lord, for all the world, help to heal us of our physical ailments, but help to heal us of our brokenness and our hardened hearts as well. Lord, we need you now desperately. Enter into our lives in such a amazing way that they cannot, that your presence cannot be denied and that your love leads. Lord, we pray this as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, Lord. Amen.
Uh, just wanted to, before we give the benediction, I just wanted a quick reminder. I keep forgetting to throw this out there. Uh, Epworth Church, please, if um, you have uh, joys, concerns, um, prayer requests that you would like to get in, please have them to us, um, the church, to the office before Wednesdays, so that way we can have them in on our service. We can't obviously have that live communication right now. So, uh, with that being said, at Epworth Church, uh, we have a bened- uh, benediction, and we call it our homework assignment, because well, everybody loves homework, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I believe Pastor Phil calls it his what now segment. My challenge or homework for us during this Advent season is simple. Take a breath. Step away from the chaos and just spend time in God's presence. Open your Bible more than just Sunday because that is where we find our hope amongst this chaos. With that being said, may you go in peace and filled with hope to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.